welcome to Challenge Solutions. My name is Caitlin and this is going to be a tutorial on using a braille display with an iOS device. This demonstration is going to be done using the Focus 40 Blue. However, it should be noted that the process of connecting a braille display to an iOS device is the same for all braille displays. Most of the commands in this video will apply to all braille displays as there is a set of universal commands for braille displays with iOS. Some of them will be specific to the Focus 40 and I will make sure to tell you which is which. There are a couple prerequisites for connecting a braille display to an iOS device. You need to have voiceover on and Bluetooth enabled. The next clip is going to be a screen recording of my iPad and I will show you where to go to find the settings for connecting your braille display. You are now looking at the home screen of my iPad, which is running iOS 14. To connect your braille display, we're going to go into settings. Settings. One new item. Settings. Then we'll go to accessibility. Mm. Accessibility. Button. S accessibility. Heading. Now we'll go to voiceover. Voiceover. On. Button. Vision. Heading. Voiceover. On. So voiceover. Accessibility. Back button. Now we'll go to braille. Braille. Button. So output. P voiceover. Back button. This is where you'll find the settings for your braille display. So I'm going to swipe through this and briefly explain everything. Braille. Heading. Output. Contracted. Button. That is the braille code that your braille display is going to output. Input. Contracted. Button. That is the braille grade that your braille display will use when you're typing in any kind of text editing field. Braille screen input. Six dot. Button. That pertains to braille screen input, which will be covered in another video. Braille tables. One. Button. That's the table that it uses. Status cells. Button. Status cells basically allow your braille display to show you different types of status like your battery level and things like that on either end of your display. I personally keep this off because I would rather have an extra braille cell dedicated to whatever I'm reading than see that status. If I need to see the status, I'll go look at the status bar of my device. Equations use Nemeth code. On. That is the setting for your mathematical equations. Show on screen keyboard. On. I personally keep this on because I like having it. Sometimes certain things don't work very well with braille displays or with braille screen input. I personally keep this on so that if I need to use the on-screen keyboard, I can do so while the braille display is connected without having to unpair and repair and deal with all that. But if you would rather have it off so you don't have to deal with it at the bottom of your screen, you can double tap the top of that. Turn pages when panning on. I keep this on so it automatically flips a page as I am using my braille display pan keys. For instance, if I'm in the Kindle app, I don't want to have to use a keystroke to go to the next page. I just want it to transition automatically. Word wrap on. I keep my word wrap setting on. I'm not 100% sure what it does, but I believe it prevents it from hyphenating words if they're too long to fit on the braille display and it just carries over to the next braille display link. Alert display duration, threes, button. That is the amount of time that pop-ups will display on your braille display. You can lengthen it if you need longer to read it or shorten it if you don't want them there for that long. You can also dismiss anything that pops up with a cursor router key. Ignore chord duration, point fives, button. That is similar to your double tap timeout, but for braille display commands. Auto advance duration, fives, button. This controls how long it takes your braille display to auto advance. I prefer to just manually control when the braille display pans because sometimes it takes me longer to read certain things and I don't want it to scroll before I'm ready. Choose a braille display. Below this is where you're going to select the braille display you want. I'm going to swipe so you can hear what's below this. In progress. That means it's searching for available devices. Smart Beetle B00718 not connected button. Actions available. That is the name of my Smart Beetle which is paired to this device, but for this demo, we're gonna be using the Focus 40 and connecting it as though it were never paired. Right now, my focus is turned off, so we're gonna turn it on and it should show up to the iPad. Focus 40 BT, E3 BC9, 1 F3, not paired, button. There's the focus, so we're gonna double tap that. Focus 40 BT, E3 BC9, 1 F3, pairing, PIN, secure, PIN, secure text field, is editing, character mode, insertion point at start. It asks for a pin. The pin for this is 0, 0, 0, 0. For some displays, it may be 1, 1, 1, 1, but I believe four zeros is standard. Zero. Done. Smart Beetle B00718, not connected, button. And we 
landed back on the Choose a Braille display screen, but the focus has connected to the iPad. It is now showing me the text that VoiceOver is currently focused on. So it's showing me the name of the Smart Beetle that is also connected to this iPad because that is where the VoiceOver focus landed. Now I'm going to give you a quick run through of some basic Braille display commands for iOS. To begin, we're going to return to the home screen with an H chord that is space with H. Anytime you're asked to perform a chord with a braille display connected to an iOS device, it means that letter and the space bar. So we'll do that now. The next thing we're going to do is navigate to the Notes app and I will demonstrate editing text with the Focus 40. It's important to note that everything you do with a braille display while it's connected to your iOS device is just a replacement for a voiceover gesture. All of the keystrokes are equivalent to a voiceover gesture. So for instance, space.1 and space.4 are equivalent to a flick left and right with one finger. Space 23 and space 45 are equivalent to the rotor gesture. Space.3 and space.6 are equivalent to flick up and down, etc. etc. So before we start looking for the notes app, we're going to go to to the top of the screen just so we have a reference point. We're going to do that by pressing space dots one, two, three on the braille display. This is the equivalent of a four finger tap near the top of the screen. Fantastical. You heard it say Fantastical. That is because that is the first app on my home screen. So we went to the top. Now to find the notes app, we're going to use the equivalent of a flick right, which is space and dot four. This is a universal braille display command. Space dot one and space dot four will act like a flick left and right on any braille display that you connect. Dropbox. Drive. Notes. To open the notes app, we're going to use space three six. This is the equivalent of a double tap on pretty much any braille display you can connect. It's also a universal command. On the focus 40, you can also use your mode buttons. If you need an overview of the focus 40 buttons, I will link that video in the description, or you could use your cursor routers. Cursor routers will also act like a double tap on pretty much any braille display you connect, but we're going to use space three six because that's the universal command. We've been deposited in the notes app. I am now going to create a new note and demonstrate text editing with the focus. I know that the new note button is in the top right corner of the screen, so I'm just going to tap it for the sake of time in this video. But if you wanted to, you could use space.1 and space.4 to swipe through this and then space 36 to activate it. If you were just using a braille display with voiceover speech off, for instance, if you were using your iPad in a classroom. New note button, note text field is editing, insertion point at start. As you can hear, it opened the text field of the new note, so we're just going to input some arbitrary text. I typed that in contracted braille on my focus keyboard and it converted it to print on the iPad screen. To read this, we can use space dot four and then space dot one quickly to go forward and then backward and voiceover will read the text. Note, text field is editing. The quick round fox jumped over the lazy dog. Character mode, insertion point at end. You heard it read the text that I just typed. Let's say you need to go to the top or bottom of this text field. You cannot do that with space one, two, three and space four, five, six, as that will take you to the top and bottom of your iPad screen completely, like the complete screen, not just the text field. So to move to the beginning and end, you're gonna just double tap within the text field and it will transport you to the top or bottom of just the text field. So you can do that with space three, six on any braille display or you can use your mode buttons on the focus. We'll use space three, six. Insertion point at start the line dog. That took you to the beginning of that line. We'll do it again. Insertion point at start. That took you to the top. Insertion point at end. And that took you to the bottom. Let's say we want to delete text. Your backspace key alone does not delete. You have to either use space with backspace or a D chord to delete with a braille display on iOS. So we're going to do space with backspace. Space. Dog. And you heard voiceover announce the word that was just deleted. Now let's replace the word with something else. 
It should be noted that VoiceOver did not give feedback for the word that I just typed. You can adjust that in your typing settings. If you go into your VoiceOver settings under, I believe it's keyboard, you can have it echo characters and words as you are typing. I have mine off for hardware keyboards because I'm a proficient enough typer that I don't necessarily need that and I can see it on the Braille display. So I changed dog to Labrador. Again, we will use space four and then space one to go forward in the back so voiceover will read the text. Note, text field is editing. The quick brown fox jumped over the lazy Labrador. Character mode, insertion point at end. Let's say you need to move your cursor to a specific point in the text. You can do that with your cursor routers. So press the cursor router above the cell that you need. It took us to the beginning of Labrador, although voiceover did not give us any feedback. So we will add the word yellow in front of Labrador. And then I will go forward and back again so you can hear it with voiceover. Note, text field is editing. The quick round fox jumped over the lazy yellow Labrador. Character mode, insertion point between space and cap L at the 49th position. You can also use your rotor to move through text with a braille display. To do that, you will use space dots two three or space dots five six to turn your rotor. Characters. It's on characters now, so I'm going to use space dot six to move along the word that the cursor is currently on. Cap L, A, B, R, A. D, O, R, period, space. You heard it read the word Labrador character by character. You could also use this method to do text selection or to copy and paste things with your rotor from your Braille display. Now we'll go home again with an H chord. Notes. Let's make sure we're at the top of the screen. Fantastical. To move to the next page of apps, you're gonna use an O chord. Page two of two, shortcuts. You heard it say page two of two, and shortcuts is in the top left corner of this page. To go back, you're gonna use space with OW dots two, four, six. Home, page one of two, fantastical. We return to the first page. You can also use your rocker bars if you have a Focus 40. Now we'll open Safari, and I will quickly demonstrate web browsing with a Braille display. Dropbox, drive, notes. Safari. If I use space dot four to swipe through my home screen to Safari, we'll activate that with space three six. Safari text field is editing. Skip to content in page link. Actions available. We're now on the challenge solutions homepage. There are several headings on this page as each blog post is under a heading. So let's say I want to go to a specific heading. We're gonna use space five six to turn our rotor to headings. Links, edit. Actions, characters, words, lines, text selection, speaking rate, sounds, braille screen input, headings. We're now going to use the nav rocker to go through the headings on this page and find the tips for math teachers blog post. Challenge solutions, heading level one. Visit welcome to challenge solutions, a comparison of three screen readers, JAWS, tips for math teachers with blind or visually impaired students. Heading level two, link, article, landmark, bookmark. This is the title heading of the tips for math teachers with blind students blog post. This blog post contains several different elements. It's got some links and some lists and just textual elements in it. To move through this, you can use space.4 to simulate a flick right. You can use your right nav rocker if you have a focus 40, or you can use your braille display pan keys. I'm going to use my right nav rocker to move through this blog post. In this video, visit link. As you heard, that is a link. You could double tap on that with space 36, your mode button or a cursor router to open the video in YouTube. We'll keep using the nav rocker. Caitlin shares 10 tips for math teachers with blind or visually impaired students. These tips are primarily directed at elementary and high school math teachers, but some can be applied to college professors as well. Below, you will find a written summary of the tips. You heard that read the introduction to this blog post, and it also displays it on the Braille display. In a text-based web page setting like this, you can use your Braille display pan keys or your scroll keys, whatever they're called on your specific display. For the focus, it's the pan keys to read this as you normally would connect it to any other device or in any kind of onboard reading application. VoiceOver is going to read it in one large chunk like that as you 
simulate a swipe if voiceover is active, but if you turn your speech off, you can just use your pan keys and it will scroll continuously on the Braille display. If you want to silence voiceover speech while the Braille display is connected so that you only have Braille output, you cannot simply turn voiceover off while the Braille display is connected as voiceover is required in order for Braille translation to happen. So you're going to have to silence your speech. To do that, you can three finger double tap on your touch screen or you can use an M chord, space with M. We'll do that now. Speech off. You heard voiceover say speech off and it displayed it on the braille display. Now I have braille output. I can scroll through this with my pan keys, my nav rockers, use all the commands that we just used, but voiceover is not going to say anything. This is how I take notes on my iPad in my college classes. I usually take my smart beetle and my iPad and I will just take notes in usually pages with voiceover silence. So I have braille output. I can read everything and navigate the iPad with the braille display but no one else has to hear voiceover and i don't have to wear earbuds so i can still hear the professor clearly we'll go home again as you heard there was no speech feedback when i did that h chord but the braille display changed and we are now back on the home screen of my ipad if you need to see your status bar while your braille display is connected you can use space with s or an s chord VoiceOver did not say anything because speech is currently off, but it took me to the status bar and it is currently displaying the time, which is 12.09 p.m. To get out of the status bar, you can either do an H chord to go home or you can use space dots one, two, three to go back to the top of your home screen. There are a lot more commands. I'm going to link a list of universal braille display commands in the description, but these are a few basics that will hopefully get you started with any braille display that you happen to have. That concludes this tutorial on using a braille display with an iOS device. You can check the description box below if you want a list of universal braille display commands for iOS. I will link the AppleViz page containing the universal braille display commands as well as the Focus Wordy user manual if you want more commands specific to the Focus. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please leave a comment below or send us an email via the contact form on challengesolutions.org. Also, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and blog if you want all of our content delivered to your inbox. Please give this video a thumbs up so that the YouTube algorithm continues to know we exist and keep an eye on the Challenge Solutions blog, podcast, and YouTube channel for more content like this. Thank you for watching.